Andrielle, welcome to the Homemaking Maven. Today we're doing something a little bit different. You can tell I am all limped up. We are in my bedroom. We are packing our house currently because we're moving to our new property and we're very excited about that. But that means that a lot of the supplies I need to make my lovely videos for you, I they're in boxes. <laughs> So I have packed up my kitchen. I do have a lovely video for you that will come out this Saturday, so look for that. Um, but I'm kind of running out of video ideas at this moment, so I thought I would share with you a few vintage items that I have collected. And this is one of them. Isn't this lovely? Now, this is actually from the 60s. So you'll see the material isn't quite what you would have had available in the 1940s. And I'm not too sure about the color. I think the color is more of a 60s color. Now this is truly a vintage piece. It is actually handmade and this was gifted to me by a woman from our church who was cleaning out her closet as many of us do during these pandemic times. Not too much else to do. And uh, she thought of me. Isn't that lovely? So she is a little bit smaller than me. You can see it doesn't quite fit. It's quite tight. Unfortunately I did burst a seam. It was more the age of the thread I believe that caused the ripping than of me wearing it on the side seems to be fine but i'll stand back and give you a full i'll stand back and give you a full swing around of the dress now my hair i just quickly threw up so don't pay attention to that part just look at the dress <laughs> My lighting is fairly poor in this room, but I think you got the gist of it. I also wanted to share with you this package that I set aside. This is from Memorabilia Pack Company. It's from the Blitz. And I just wanted to quickly go through it with you. Very interested to see what is in here. And I can put the price as well as the website here along the bottom. And of course, down in the description below if you're at all interested. So it did take a while for me to get it. I'm in Canada. It took about two weeks um, for the shipping for everything to go through. So it comes with these little cards and these little cards. They say air raid precautions on the back. It just goes through an air raid precautions badge, a chain of buckets, civilian duty respirator, representation of air defense control room, hose laying lorry, control of incendiary bombs, medium trailer fire pump in action, anti-aircraft searchlight, anti-aircraft sound location, sorry, anti-aircraft sound locator and window protection. And it just gives you a little bit of detail on the back. And I don't know if these were playing cards or they were meant to be postcards or just collectibles. I'm not too sure. Next we have City of Birmingham ARP Casualty Services Identity Card. Valid only when stamped on the back by issuing officer. Oh, I've got no stamp on the back. <laughs> These are all reproductions, so they're not actual vintage items, just replicas. But it is City of Birmingham ARP Casualty Services Slade Road First Aid Post number 23. This is to certify that A. Reese holds the following office. First Aid Worker. Okay, next in the package, I have the ARP Practical Guide, ARP Air Raid Protection for the Household and Air Raid Warden, officially recommended by the Air Raid Defense League. Very important during the Blitz. So this is definitely showing a lot, it's pretty funny, it's actually showing a lot of ads at the beginning here. Um, okay, but here are here is some information. Oh, information on how to build trenches and shelters, a roll call list of all who should be present. Oh, all things that should be present. Interesting, essential things to have in your refugee room. Oh, you even need a gramophone. That's so funny. And also it shows different ways to create a refugee room and how you should go about doing it and, you know, having stairs, a door, breathing vents, you want fresh air in your room. That is so interesting. And then on this page, here you are. I don't think that's an Anderson shelter, is it? This one is just made with concrete round a wooden frame. This one doesn't specifically say Anderson shelter and you're just using concrete bricks and it says corrugated iron, um, but I assume this is what the Anderson shelters would have looked like. Very interesting. 
Um, this seems to be a lot of what to do in an emergency, to check for electricity, to check for gas breaks. Very interesting. Next, I have Civil Defense Number 5 Public Information Leaflet. Fire precaution. Very interesting. So this is how to deal with home fires, fire bombs, um, what you should do now. Get out any junk out of your house, of course, so it doesn't catch fire. Have ready four large buckets. Yes, definitely be prepared. Of course, that's the entire theme of the war, I think. Be prepared, get ready. This is what's going to happen. Oh gosh, this is all, okay. So all these papers were folded into this leaflet. Baby anti-gas protective helmets and children's respirators. Very important. That's when you go and pick them up. If your name is under here, this is when you go and pick up your baby's respirator. Very important. <gasps> Cooking after the blitz. <gasps> Cooking. Okay, so here are a few tips to help. Don't use both the oven and the hot plate, okay? In the oven, slow cooking casseroles could be done. On the hot plate, a small joint or a pot roast could be done. Vegetables should be cooked in a waterless way, interesting, by putting the prepared vegetables in a saucepan and pour a cup full of boiling water over them, then cover and cook slowly. It doesn't sound waterless. So the reason you wanna reduce your cooking is because the gas pressure will be temporarily reduced after a raid because there could be broken mains, things need to be fixed, and so there might be leaks and things happening. And so that would definitely affect your cooking, and thankfully that's not something I have to worry about, but that would have been very difficult back in the 1940s. Your air raid precautions, what to do now, and what to do in an air raid. This is very important. So of course, the best precautions that I see are lay food in reserve. You know how I love to stock food and decide where you're going to shelter. Also very important. Save your home by removing that incendiary bomb with self-locating bomb removal. Look at that. Attach this appliance to your broom handle and you can take care of incendiary bombs yourself. Amazing. Help civil defense in your own and nation's interest. Immediately after each all clear is sounded during the day and first thing in the morning, please carefully examine your premises and garden and report immediately any objects or the conditions to your nearest warden's post. Because they want to take care of things immediately, of course. Oh, and look, they have a replica note on the back to Warden O'Connell, the payment of wages returned with thanks a Hammond. Oh. They're so thankful to their air raid wardens. They would have done so much work and it would have been so scary and so difficult because they would have had to deal with, um, yeah, when raids actually happened and people actually got hurt and people lost their homes and fires. And I don't envy those people, not at all. We also have this, which is anti-gas, personal decontamination. That's important to know. We've also got a fire precaution, clearance of loss. So by order of the Ministry of Home Security. I love that everything is the Ministry of. I love it. By the order of the Ministry of Home Security, occupiers of dwelling houses must clear and keep clear of all articles, any loft which is not used or furnished for use for human habitation. And that was simply because they don't want more things catching fire that don't need to. First aid in brief. Read this carefully and carry it in your pocket at all times. I might carry this in my pocket at all times. <gasps> bleeding from the trunk, bleeding from the head. These are all very important. Clothes on fire, very important. We've got after the raid, what to do with damages to your hip, to your house, um, repairs to your house, food. So if you're not able to get hot food because your gas has been cut off, there are community kitchens and meat dishes can be obtained and you can get tea for a penny and children's portions at half price. So. Just go to your local kitchen and they'll set you up. Air Raid Warden Service. Now, what I love about this is it talks about a lady warden. Obviously, men are at war, so women just took up the jobs that were needed. A lady warden will call upon you shortly to obtain how many people are in your home, details about children, where do you usually sleep, and give the addresses of relatives or friends that you would like to advise. If you have visitors, let the lady warden know. And if you vacate your home, let the lady warden know so she can make a note of it. 
So although movement of people wasn't restricted, it was important to inform those around you because they need to keep you safe. They need to know how many people they need to keep track of and to look for you in the rubble of your home if something were to happen. Look out in the blackout, oh my goodness. So many people got hit by cars in the blackout because cars didn't use lights, there was no street lights, there was nothing, no lights on at all, and people would get hit by cars all the time. And this is just how to fit your car so that you don't have any lights showing. You take the light out of the ceiling, you dim all indicators. Yeah, oh, I can only imagine the difficulty that would bring. This, um, these just look kind of like postcards. You can see the bombed city there. The air raid folks right there. Goodness. Here we go. This is St. Paul's Cathedral. Look at that. Oh my word. And um, there's everyone sleeping in the air raid shelter in the London Underground. Goodness. Scary times. Oh no. And then a dead body tag. Sad, isn't it? The Blitz and You, what you need to know. So after reading through this, it is quite a lengthy book. What is interesting is they have, I mean, anything you could think of. They have furniture, they have food, they have orphans, everything that you can think of, and they tell you exactly what you need to do. Most often there's a ministry that you need to contact and they will help you with that, or simply go to the police or the air raid warden and they will help direct you. So this is amazing that they really thought of everything. They knew what to do, what to expect, and this is how you handle it. That would just make you in such a difficult time, just give you comfort as a citizen, just knowing that someone's got your back if the worst should happen this is how you handle it and again that's part of why i love the 40s so much although terrible terrible things were happening they had a plan and they came together as a community to make sure everyone was helped that they had a solution for everyone and i'm glad we don't have to go through that right now it was at the same time, it was so that no one was left behind. Children got properly fed, adults got properly fed, everyone, no matter your income, no matter your status, you got food, you got help, you got clothing, you got furniture. That to me is just civil pride, taking pride in your country, helping every citizen, no matter what level of influence they had, rich, poor, it doesn't matter. I absolutely love that. And so I am so happy that I got all this from Memorabilia Pack Company. Um, they're not affiliated. I bought this all with my own money and I don't have a coupon code or anything. But if you want to check them out, like I said, links are down below. Well, that's it for me today, Mavens. I hope you found this video informative. Like I said, I do have a lovely cooking video for you coming up this Saturday. And next Saturday, I should have another vintage hair that tutorial that I'm going to try. Um, I don't know how successful I'll be because again, a lot of my things are packed, but I will do my best. Be sure to look for those videos coming up soon. Any video requests, please leave them down below. I will likely get to them in the next month or so, again, because we're moving. I keep talking about it, but it's happening. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for liking. Thank you for subscribing. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!